Thanks for joining us for this podcast from Atlee Church. Atlee is a safe place for those who've given up on church or never went. Our mission is to reach seekers and equip believers to love God, love themselves, love others, and serve the world. We'd love to have you connect with us at one of our physical campuses or online for a weekend service. You can find out more about our locations and service times on our website. We hope that you will be encouraged and challenged to take the next step in your personal faith journey through the message you're about to hear. Okay, so heads I propose to or tells I don't. Order the buckler and shield and prepare for battle. Many of us have been in similar situations, haven't we? Where we've had some big decision to make and we're trying to figure out what's the best choice. Whether if it's, should I ask this person to marry me and we're going to live the rest of our lives together? Is that a good decision? Or maybe it's to take that job that you've been offered, but you don't know if it's the right fit or not. Or maybe it's to move to that new location that's exciting, but you don't really know anybody. So you're trying to figure out if you should go there or not. Or maybe it's to have that tough conversation with somebody that you've been like wanting to have, but kind of scared to have at the same time. No matter what it is, life is full of decisions, isn't it? And most of the time, just like the song, we're looking for some sort of peace of mind about the decisions that we make and the directions that we're going. So today, we're kicking off a brand new series titled Divine Direction. And we're going to be looking over the next few weeks of how to become better decision makers. And we're going to look at some very practical and very biblical looks at how we can make better decisions and figure out the direction for our lives that maybe God is leading us in. And so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Trey Kreitzer. I'm one of the campus pastors and teaching pastors here on staff. And I just want to say welcome to all of our campuses and those watching on our online campus today. Glad that you're with us. And as we kick off today, our goal is just to kind of create a foundation together that we can figure out how we can make better decisions and go a better direction together. Because if we were to be honest, and let's just kind of take a poll together today, how many of you in your life right now have come face to face with having to make a tough decision or choose a direction? Anybody? Wow. A lot of us. So you, you can hopefully relate to these next four weeks. And if you can't, here's the deal. Whether you're in a decision now, maybe you've made a big decision in the past, And hands down, 100%, you're going to be making a big decision in the future, whether you like it or not. So hopefully you're going to be able to learn some things during the next few weeks that will help you in your decision making. Now, if you're in the midst of making a decision right now, you're probably coming up with a few questions. And these are the questions that most of us wrestle with when it comes to decisions. And with my time in ministry, as long as I've kind of been a pastor, These are kind of the three foundational questions people seem to come to me and ask because these are the ones that they're wanting answers to. They go something like this. What do you think God wants me to do? What do you think God wants me to do? And the next question that I hear often is, where does God want me to go? Where does he want me to go? The next question we hear a lot is this. What is God's will for my life? These are three big questions, big life questions that many of us want answers to. And to be honest, we search for them and we try to find the right answer. But most of the times we come up short and we want to know how to make better decisions when it comes to these areas in our life and figure out the answers that we're looking for. Now, this has become even worse in our millennial generation. And I know this because I am a millennial and I belong to the millennial generation because we have so many choices, more so than any other generation before us. Before us, uh, years back, there was only maybe a few places to eat, maybe a few places to go see a movie. And now we have so many options of things things to go do, places to go, that it becomes very hard for us to make a decision. Let me give you an example of this. How many of you all like Netflix? 
Anybody like Netflix? Okay, cool. I'm not the only one that's addicted to it, right? So my wife and I, we... Um, yeah, our life's a little different now with a toddler in the house. We don't get to go out and have date nights as much as we used to. So most of our date nights consist of popcorn and Netflix, right, in the evening time. So we put our son down to bed one night, and we come back in the living room, and we're like, okay, let's, um, let's try to have a date night. Let's, um, let's watch a movie together. Very simple, easy task, right? Well, we turn on Netflix, and my wife starts cruising through shows that she would want to watch or movies that she liked. And I was like, babe, we are not watching that stuff right now. That is boring. So she's like, well, you pick something. So I'm like, okay, I got this. So I get the remote, I'm flicking through the channels, and I found three or four solid good action flicks that we could watch. And she's like, we are not wasting our date night watching that. We know what happens. The bad guy, you know, gets caught by the good guy. And I'm like, but it's awesome, right? So we spend an hour of our night cruising through Netflix, and we still couldn't pick a movie to watch. We're that indecisive, and we got so frustrated that we just put the remote down, closed the, um, the door, and went to bed because we couldn't decide. Have you done that before? Anybody? It's a lot of choices, right? And it makes it very difficult to make a decision. And because we have so many choices at our fingertips these days, that it almost paralyzes us from making a decision because we don't want to make the wrong decision. Or some of us are like this. We pray and we say, God, you know, tell me where to go. God, tell me where to go. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do, God. And we wait for an answer from God because here's what we want to do. We want God to make the decision for us so that if the marriage doesn't work out or if the job is horrible or the new location is just not what we thought it would be, we can blame God for it and we have nothing in stake for ourselves, right? We could say, well, God told me to do that. But what I've read throughout scripture and what you and I have come to realize, hopefully, is that that's not really how God works sometimes. And that's what we're gonna learn about over the next few weeks as we jump into this series, learn about the direction that God wants for our lives and help us with the decisions that we're facing right now. And as we kick off today, let's just be honest with ourselves. We're not the best decision makers, are we? We're not. Because if we could go back in time and rewrite some of the decisions that we made, we would do it because they weren't the best decision and maybe we justified something and we are king and queen of justifying stuff, aren't we? To make it fit our bill to get what we want. But a lot of times we wish we could go back and do the decisions over that, we, that we've made in the past. And so hopefully this series will help us make better decisions as we go into our future. Because the decisions that we make today Determine the stories that we tell tomorrow. Make sure you get that. The decisions that we make today determine the stories that we tell tomorrow. And you and I are a result of the decisions that we've made. We're a direct result of the decisions that we've made. Craig Rochelle, kind of where we got the um, idea for this series, wrote this book, Divine Direction. And here's what he says, and I love this. He says, you are one decision away from changing your life forever. But the funny thing is, you probably don't know what that one decision will be. And isn't that so true? Like we wanna make the next big decision that could change our life, but we just gotta figure out what that decision is. And so hopefully, like I said, this morning just sets a foundation for our series over the next few weeks as we discover how to be the decision makers God wants us to be. So hopefully you got one of these when you came in. It's a program, looks something like this. Go ahead and pull that out. And if you're online, you can take notes there as well. And here's what we're gonna do. I wanna give you two big thoughts to help us think about decision making differently today. And I'm not going to think about all the decisions that we're gonna make as far as the things in our lives. I want us to look at our lives personally as the decision makers and give us some tools that maybe will help us become better decision makers today. So the first thought is this together today, is that God cares about who before do. Number one, God cares about who before do. And you're probably like, what does that mean? Let me, let me break it down for you this way. So a lot of us think, okay, God, what is it you want me to do? Where is it you want me to go? Here's another question I want you to ask yourself today. 
God, who do you want me to become? It's a different question, isn't it? It's a different way of looking at decisions because most of us want direct answers for the decisions that we're making instead of helping us, the person, become a better decision maker. So I love this verse. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 tells us this about God's will. It says, God's will is for you to be holy. Everybody say holy. holy. It's not to go this or do that. If you want to know God's will for you this morning, it's simply this. God's will for you is to be holy. It's that simple. Now, you're like, how do I be holy? What does that mean? The word holy means to be set apart or to be different. And that's not an easy task because when we think about our lives, most of us are following a set of beliefs or people or things and and we just kind of go with the flow instead of thinking about the person that God wants us to become. Not many of us in decisions think about, well, what does God want to do in my life through this decision? Who does God want me to become is important. And I don't think it gets a lot of focus because most of us focus on the do instead of the who. So God cares about the who. He cares about who we're becoming because I'm convinced if we get the who right, it will lead us to the right do. Who matters to God and and being holy and set apart is not easy, but it can be done. Instead of worrying so much about what God wants to do in your future, what if we were to think today about what God wants to do in your life right now? What would that look like? I remember for me, when I was um, just graduating high school, I had to make a decision about where to go to college. Now, some of you are probably making that decision. Parents, you're probably freaking out about this decision for your children if you're sending them off to this strange place. But for me, I I wanted to do ministry. I knew I kind of wanted to be in some sort of pastor role, and I just had to find a place to go to to get training. And so I looked at all these places trying to figure out the right place to go. And finally, I found a bunch of Bible colleges, and I picked this one in Virginia Beach. It was a small Bible college, and I was like, man, that looks like a great place for me to go to get the training that I need and figure out what God wants to do in my life, all this stuff. So I show up to the college, and during orientation, they kind of give you your class schedule and all that stuff. And this particular Bible college, you got to kind of choose some different areas that you wanted to see in order to kind of get hands-on experience in some different areas. So they ask, you know, what are your top two or three picks that you would like to learn more about? So I put on there, man, I would love to learn student ministry. I love to learn how to work with middle school and high schoolers to help make a difference in their life. Like, this is what I want to do for God. This is how I want to change the world. And I wrote that down. I wrote some other things down. And then as class started, they handed out our assignments for the year. Guess what I got chose to learn about during my time in Bible college. I got put on the cleanup team, the college cleanup team. Now, listen, I thought I made a wrong decision, right? I I thought this was the right Bible college to go to. This is where I wanted to go. But this is me on the cleanup team, right? I had to learn some things. So each week, my goal was not to do a bunch of great things for God. My goal was to clean and mop the entire church, and the Bible college every week. And I was like, God, why would you do this? I want to be a pastor. I want to help people. I want to do these great things for you. Why would you put me on the cleanup team? And what I come to realize over weeks and months of me doing this was there were some things that that God wanted to do in my life before he was going to be effective in using my life to help others. There were some things in my heart that needed to be dealt with. And God used a mop to help me figure those things out. Because every single week as I would clean the college, I'd be so bitter and all this stuff. God revealed some things in in my life and spirit that I had yet to deal with. Some of the things that God started to teach me while I was there, I became very grateful for afterwards, but I wasn't so grateful for in the moment. I learned that God wanted to work on my who to prepare me for what he wanted me to do. And here's some things that he taught me about my who. He wanted me to learn how to serve others instead of serving myself all the time. I learned there's some areas in my life that I was still selfish and that I wanted things my way. God taught me during that time that that he wanted me to be humble, that there were some areas that I still wanted the recognition and I wanted people to notice me. 
And instead, what God decided to teach me was that there were areas that he wanted my attention. I remember there were some areas in my life that God wanted to teach me to be joyful, no matter what my circumstances or no matter what I was doing for him, that I could choose how my spirit and how my attitude was going to be. What I had to learn was that there were areas that I would spend too much time complaining in my life. Another thing that God taught me during this time is to love others in a different way. I thought I had to work with people or do this, but what I realized is that I could clean the church and create a great place for them to come in and out of this place, and that was my way of helping. And so I learned a lot about myself during that time. But just think, if I would have been so bitter and complained the whole time and worried about, oh God, I want to do this for you, he would have never been allowed to to come into my life and work on my who. And what I've come to realize about God is God cares a lot about your who. He cares a lot about who you're becoming. So it's important for us to figure out what to do and what God has in store for us, but it's equally as important to figure out who does God want me to be? Who does God want to create me to be? What are some things he wants to teach me about my life? And what's so cool is after getting out of the Bible college, I was one of the only people that got a job in ministry working with middle school and high school students. But I turned my lessons that I learned from sweeping and and mopping things all week into student ministry, and I got to serve and help kids like I never would have if I wouldn't have learned those things about myself. God has a funny way of leading us sometimes. He has a funny way of giving us directions. But sometimes it's important to remember that God is worried about our who, just as much as he's worried about what he wants us to do. So think about your life. What have you been focusing on? Have you been focusing on, God, what is it you want me to do? Where is it what you, where do I want to go? Instead of God, who do you want me to be? Is there areas in my life that that I still need to work on to, to equip me and prepare me for what you have in store for me? The next thing on the back of your program, the next big thought I want to give you just to lay a foundation for this Divine Direction series is this. So who before do, the second thing is this, God cares about why before what? God cares about why before what? Here's the thing I've come to to realize and and understand about God, that, that motives matter to God. The way in which your heart operates matters to God. I love this verse, Proverbs 16, 2 tells us this. It says, you may think everything you do is right, and most of us do, don't we? But the Lord judges your motives. Everybody say motives. Let's make sure you're with me. The Lord judges your motives. He judges your heart. He judges the things about you that only you know about. And it's important for us to understand why we do what we do. I love, there's this uh, guy in the Old Testament. His name is David. And he prays, prays one of the most vulnerable, honest prayers before God. And here's what he says. He says, God, search my heart. Find out if there's any offensive way in me. Get rid of it and lead me in the way everlasting. What a bold prayer to pray, right? Like God, search my heart. God, search my motives. Get into those nooks and crannies that that I haven't really allowed anybody to get into. That's that's a really bold prayer to ask God for. But I love that prayer because it shows us that David really wanted God to lead his life. So much so that he was willing to say, God, search whatever's there. And if anything's not of you, God, get rid of it. I don't want it in my life. Because here's what I've come to realize as well. It's impossible to end up in the right place with the wrong motives. It's almost impossible to end up in the right place if you've got the wrong motives. And you know your motives better than anybody else. And so let's just do a little game together this morning to see where our motives would be. And here's some common life questions and directions that we may ask in our everyday life. And let's see what the questions lead us to. Let's think about this. Here's a question we ask. God, should I buy this car? Should I buy this car, God? A better question to ask is this, why are you buying that car? Are you buying it for reliable transportation or maybe a safer vehicle for your family because the old one has seen better days? Or 
Are you trying to impress people you can't afford to impress? Motives matter. Let's take a look at another one here. God, should I post this picture to my Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever social media? Here's another question we should ask. Why are you posting that picture for the world to see? Are you posting it to share a great memory or to help people or to, to show them a part of your life? Or are you trying to get attention for yourself in areas that you should never be getting attention for? Motives matter. Let's look at another one. This is fun, right? All right. <laughs> You're like, this hurts. <laughs> All right. God, should I compliment this person? A better question to ask is, why are you complimenting that person? Are you complimenting them to encourage them or help them or you see them struggling? Or are you trying to get that person to notice you or get attention for yourself? Motives matter. Why before what? What's the motive behind why we do what we do? Think about the decisions that you just raised your hand in the beginning of the service that you're trying to make. What are the motives behind you doing those things? Because that's going to help you get to where you need to be quicker than anything else, is to check your motives. Why are you wanting that thing? Why are you going after that? Why are you wanting to move? Why are you doing this thing? Motives matter to God and they ought to matter to us. Colossians 3.17 tells us this about our motives. It says, and whatever, everybody say whatever. Make sure you're with it. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So here's what the Bible teaches us to do. Whatever you do, no matter where you go, no matter what job you take, no matter who you marry, whatever you do, do it for the right reasons. Do it for God. So if you drive a truck for a living, drive your truck for God and do it for his glory. If you're a nurse or a doctor, serve other people and do it for God. Whether if you work at a grocery store as a clerk, do that for God. If you're a stay-at-home mom and you wipe a lot of diapers, do it for God. If you're a construction worker, do that for God. If you're a banker, do that for God. Whatever you do, do it for the right reasons because the why really does matter. Why you do what you do matters in your life and your decision making and the direction in which you follow God. Whatever you do, do it for God. Be faithful where he has you. Do it well. Instead of worrying about the next big thing or where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do, God? Say, God, how can I serve you best with my life right now? I want to tell you a story about a man that I know, and uh, I met this man a few years ago, and he's made quite an impression on my life. He's become just a great friend and spiritual kind of father to me, and just a great mentor in my life, and uh, a person I go to on the regular. But to be honest with you, I know very little about what he does for a living. He's that brilliant. I have no idea what he does. But I tell you this, I've gotten to really know who he is over the last few years. And it's made me really respect him. And it's really made me realize how important the why is in our lives. Here's some things I've noticed about who this person is. Is that he prays for me in our church every single week. He just takes time out of his busy life and schedule and prays for me, for our church, for people in our church if they're struggling. He serves at our church no matter what he's asked to do, whether it's take some pictures in the back of the service or if it's up on stage playing in the band. I've noticed that he's very generous. And if there's ever a need around us, he's always the first one to jump in and say, how can I help with that? I remember there was a single mom in one of our services and her car broke down and she needed to get her kids to school the next day. And so she came up to me and was telling me about it. And I was like, I don't know how to help you. I would love to. And right away, he comes off the stage and comes over and says, I'll take care of it. I got it. And pays and gets this lady's car fixed so she can get her kids back to school. Who is important? What I've noticed is that he's patient. He's a good listener to anybody and everybody who just needs a friend or a listening ear. I've noticed that he's a good husband and he's a good father to his kid and he makes sacrifices for them. 
I noticed that he never wants recognition. And if he knew I was telling the story this morning, he would probably just run out of the church. <laughs> he uh, is very joyful in the midst of pain. He's going through his own struggles right now, yet he still shows up with a smile on his face. He's a doctor by trade, but most of us don't even know that. Most of us know him for being a faithful follower of Jesus, and he lives it out every single day because he understands who before do and why before what. He knows why he's doing what he's doing, and he knows who he is in Christ, and he lives it out every single day. Now, why is this important? Why are these two thoughts fundamental as we talk about decision-making over the next few weeks? Because I don't know if you remember, we did a series um, toward the beginning of the year called One Life, Live It. And we talked about the idea that our days are numbered here on earth and eventually we're all going to die. And it's important for us to remember why we do what we do here on earth and live in our life to the fullest. And I remember during that series, we talked about a lot of things, but one of the things that I, I keep thinking about and bringing my mind back to is one day when I'm on my deathbed and my wife would be next to me and my kids and hopefully some couple grandkids and all kinds of people around. And you know what we're going to not talk about? We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about what I did or if I was a successful leader or pastor or any of those things. We're not going to talk about um, all the busyness in our lives and all the things that, you know, we were on our cell phone too much and all that stuff. We're not going to sit around and, and talk about all my degrees and how smart I was or any of that stuff. We're not gonna sit around and talk about all the things that you know, we thought we were good at. But you know what we will sit around that deathbed and talk about? We'll talk about the things that mattered most, the why. We'll talk about the many years that my wife and I spent being faithful and married to each other. We'll talk about how we raised our kids in the best godly home that we could. We'll talk about how we loved each other well and we loved other people well. We'll talk about the many private decisions that we had to make in tears and agony and how we came up on the other side of it and how the faithful choices that we made to sacrifice for each other and for others. And we'll talk about the many family memories in the life that we live together. And you know why we'll talk about those things? Because those are the things that matter the most. And so much of our time and our decision-making is focused on things that do not matter. They're focused on things that we wish would happen one day or this or that, instead of focusing on the life that God has us to live right now. Who before do? Why? Why are you doing the things you're doing? Because they matter to God. And it makes me think about what Christ did for you and for me and the example that he set. He came here on earth some 2,000 years ago and he set an example like any other example that's been set. He knew who he was. He kept proclaiming to people, I am the son of God. And after he would do that, he would continue to reconcile people to himself. And he came to save us from our own sin. He knew who he was and he knew what he came to do. He knew who, his who and he knew his why. And that was the foundation on which he did his ministry on. And do you know that for yourself? Do you know who you are in Christ? And do you know why you do the things that you do? Because when you get the who right, you'll get the do much better. And when you get the why right, the what that you do will become more effective. Think about the theme verse that we read this morning at the beginning of our service. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 tells us this. Maybe. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. That's an incredible passage, very popular passage of scripture. But I think a lot of us, we lean too much on our own understanding. But what I've come to realize is that if we continue to trust God with our lives, and we continue to follow after him, if we get the who right and the why right, as we begin to follow God, he will show us where to go and he'll show us what to do because our motives will be pure and we'll know who we are. 
And that's a very important thing to know in any decision making, that he will lead and guide our next steps if we're right with him. So two big thoughts I want to give you. I want you to write these down in the back of your program. This is the next fill in the blank. Two big thoughts I want to leave you with today as we kind of wrap up our time together is this. If you're becoming the right who, God will help you choose the right do. And if you're driven by the right why, God will lead you to the right what. So if you're becoming who God has created you to be, God will help you choose the right thing that he wants you to do. And if you're driven by the right why, why am I doing these things? God will lead you to the right what, what he wants you to do and what he wants you to experience. Whatever you do, do it for God. And as we continue to follow God with our lives, he will help us with our direction and our decisions. And so today, what I want us to do as we close out our time together is make one decision together. I think we can do it. We're going to make one decision together before we close out our time. And I was thinking about this, and the question I want us to answer as we close today is this. It's on the back of your program. It's the very bottom thing. It says, who does God want me to become today? Who does God want me to become today? Not what does God want me to do? Where does God want me to go? All those things. Simply, let's just answer this question. And I want you to think about this question as we continue the rest of the weeks of the series. Who does God want you to become today? And some of you may be saying, I have no idea. I have no idea who God wants me to become. But as I was spending some time this week just kind of reading scripture, I created a list of some various things that God wants us to become. And here's some things that scripture teaches us that God would like us to become. And I want you just to, as I read this list, think about the one that speaks to you the most. And I just want you to write that down at the bottom of your program as we make this decision together. Who does God want me to become today? Here are all the things that I found. That God wants me to become holy, set apart or different. That God wants me to become pure. That God wants me to be joyful. God wants me to be patient. God wants me to be loving and self-controlled. God wants me to be gentle and not easily angered. God wants me to be kind. He wants me to be faithful and he wants me to be forgiving. So think about your life right now. As we become better decision makers, which one of these speaks to you the most? Which one of these, if you're like, God, if I could become this over the next four weeks, I know it would help me become a better person, but also a better decision maker. Which one would it be? And I just want you to write that in the blank there on the bottom of your program. And if you don't have a pen or a program with you, just make a mental note of that one word, whatever it may be. Holy, pure, joyful, patient, loving, self-controlled, gentle, not easily your kind, faithful, or forgiving. Which one is it for you today? Because I believe the more that we become like Christ, the more he will continue to lead and guide our every step as we make these big decisions and figure out the direction he wants us to go with our lives. But it starts with us being real before ourselves and before God and just saying, God, search my heart. Which one of these do I need to become more of? And so today, as we close out at all of our campuses, as you think about that one word, I just want you to stand up where you're at just for a moment. And here's what we're going to do as we close out our time together. There's an older worship song. It's called From the Inside Out. And I was listening to the lyrics of this song this week, and I thought it would be a perfect song for us to kind of make our prayer and declaration together today as we close out our time together. And here's what the lyrics say pretty simple. It says, in my heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out. Lord, let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. So let's just take a moment together before God to not worry about God, where do you want me to go? God, what do you want me to do? And just say, God, Today, who do you want me to become? Change me from the inside out so that I can be the person that you've called me to be. A lot of us like to look at stuff on the outside all the time, but for a moment, I just want you to look on the inside 
And as we sing these lyrics together today, I just want them to be your prayer that you would just say, God, make me into who you want me to make me to be. And I just want an opportunity to pray for you as we go into this song together. So let's pray. And then we're all gonna sing this out together. Jesus, I thank you for our time together today. God, I thank you for your word and how it continues to lead and guide our lives. God, I thank you for each and every person that's here and the decisions that are on their hearts and minds today as they're having to make some tough choices. God, I pray today that you would help us become the person that you created us to be and help us sort out our motives so that we can be better decision makers for you. Lord, change us today from the inside out and help us realize who you want us to be so that we can do what you've called us to do. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you for our time together today and we give our hearts and attention to you as we proclaim these words. And we all agreed together and said, amen. We hope this message will help you continue to explore, experience, and express God's grace and truth for your life. If Atlee Church is making a difference in your life, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions from this message, we'd love to talk to you. Email us at stories at atleechurch.org. Check out our website for more about our community, our ministries, and how you can financially support Atlee Church to help us continue to share messages like this one. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We have links on our website where you can search for us on iTunes to get this podcast every week. Thanks again and hope to see you next Sunday.